mathematical methods of physics were solving differential equations, boundary value problems. And so I, you know, I want to go over different methods of solving these. We've done this analytically, but I, I want to solve, I want to solve it with the shooting method. Okay, so I just picked a differential equation with boundary values. It doesn't really matter. But here's my differential equation y double prime plus 4y is equal to 0. So that's the second derivative with respect to space. We use dots for time and primes for space. That's just what we do. And then I have the boundary conditions y at 0 is negative 2 and y at pi over 4 is equal to 10. If you did this, which I didn't, but you did, you'd get this as a solution to that after you, you know, find a solution apply the boundary conditions and solve for the coefficients. So, you know, just to remember, if I had like a time-based one with initial conditions, I'd have two initial conditions to solve for two constants in the second order differential equation. And that'd be the initial position and the initial time. I mean, the initial velocity and the initial position. Okay. So, but I have two boundaries. I have two, those are my two conditions. Let's just plot this function. I'm going to start off and just plot the solution. That way we'll have something to talk about. Let's do it in Python. Okay. Switching over to Python. So I'm using WebV Python from scratch. Let's make a graph. G1 equals graph. Uh, X tied, I'm just going to plot Y versus X. X title equals X. Y title equals Y. And then I'm going to put the width at 400 and the height, I cannot spell today, height at 200. Okay. So that's just going to make the graph. And then I can, I'm going to make a function I'm going to call it F1, G curve, color equals color dot blue. And then I'm going to say X equals zero. That's where I start, right? I'm going from X equals zero to pi over four. And then I need how big of a step I'm going to take. Let's call that DX and put that at 0 0.01. And then let's just, let's just get to it. So while x is less than pi over 4, what do I need to do? I need to calculate y. So y is going to be equal to this function I have right here, negative 2 times cosine 2 times x plus 10 plus 10 times sine of 2x. And then I'm going to plot that, f1.plot, uh, xy, and then I'm going to increase my value of x. If you don't do that, you will be stuck in an endless loop, a forever loop, x equals x plus dx, run, and there's my solution. Okay, so now I want to find that solution not the same way. I want to actually find it with the, with the shooting method. Let's jump to the board and talk about the shooting method, uh, and that's what we're going to do. So right here, let's just erase this stuff. I, I do need that. Let's keep that up there. I don't, I don't know the solution now. Let's pretend like I don't know the solution. So here's the idea. We have this Euler method for calculating stuff. Remember that I can say y double prime if I have a small delta x. So I'm going to say delta x is 0.01. y double prime is going to be delta y prime over delta x. It's the rate of change. It's the, cha the gradient, technically. It's the gradient change in y. And if I know the value of y prime uh, at the beginning of the time and the space interval, I always say time. Look, I even put time. Look at that. Wrong x. Uh, this is going to be equal to uh, y2 prime minus y1 prime over delta x. So I can take that and solve for y2 prime. y2 prime, y1 prime, plus y double prime delta x. And remember y double prime up here, I'm just going to say y double prime is negative 4y. I just solve for y double prime. So I can't do that, though. Right, because I don't know if I start my little graph right here, I'm starting down here at y x. I'm starting down here at y of zero is negative two. So I know my initial y value, but I don't know my initial slope because I don't know the function. So I can't, I can't do it. Okay, but if I could, I could then use that value to calculate the successive values like that. I could move forward in time. Uh, now, I could also do the same thing for y prime. I could say y prime is equal to delta y delta x, which is y2 minus y1 over delta x. And then I could say y2 is y1 plus y prime delta x. Now, that I do know because I do know the initial y, right? I just don't know the initial y prime. So it, 
we can't use our normal Euler method to solve this problem because I don't know the initial slope. Instead, I know the final y value. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to just pick this. I'm going to say, y, let's say y prime uh, equals 1. Let's just say I picked that. I'm going to start with a different value. So now I, I have that value, and I can go proceed on. And let's say I do, I do that, and it do, goes, goes like this. I just picked the function. Well, suppose that uh, my, my value of y equals 10, I want to be right there, but I'm not. So I missed, right? So I shot, and I missed. So what do you do if you shoot and you miss? You change your initial condition. So now I can change my initial slope. Now let's say try two, and then I go like this. Oh, I still missed. And then I'm gonna try three, and then I still missed. Or no, I got it that time. Okay, so I'm gonna keep changing my initial slope, which I don't know until it works. That's why it's a shooting method. So imagine I'm like shooting a, a ball into a trash can or, or a piece of paper, and I miss. So I throw it a little bit faster. I throw it a little bit faster until I finally hit it. That's why it's called the shooting method. Okay, so how are we going to do this in Python? Well, what we're going to do, I'm going to do it manually first. I'm going to just do the numerical calculation. I'm going to pick a value for y prime, and I'm going to see where it ends up. And if, if, I, if it doesn't work, I'm going to change this and do it again. And then we'll do it automated. Okay, it's going to be great. And we'll do it while I'm making an animated graph and stuff like that. So let's just do this uh, the, the manual way first. So I already have my, my actual solution there, right? That's already done. What I want to do now is to redo it with, with my new solution. So let's actually make a new graph. I'm going to call this F2 G curve. Typing problems. Color equals color dot red. Okay. So that's going to be my shooting method. And I'm going to leave this alone because I've already plotted that function. I don't want to stop that. But I'm going to start over and just uh, with my new value. So I'm going to say y is 0, uh, x is 0. dx I don't need to change. What's my initial y value? y is negative 2. Why is y equal to negative 2? Well, that's my boundary condition. One of my boundary conditions is the starting position. So I actually know one of the, one of the things. I know y 0 is negative 2. Um, let's call this dy start equals zero. I'm not going to change that. Okay, That's my starting y. I don't know what it should be. I don't know. So I just picked. Uh, and, and why am I calling it dy start? You'll see in a second. Uh, I don't really know anything else, but I can say while uh, x is less than pi over 4, the same thing. I'm not going to I'm not going to animate it or anything. What I want to do is to calculate y double prime. I'm going to call y double prime ddy. ddy is going to be negative 4 times y, right? That's my differential equation. That's what I had up there. y double prime is negative 4y. Okay. Now I know y double prime, I can calculate I can update dy. So up here I'm going to put dy. dy is dy start, which doesn't make any sense, I know, but just hold on. So dy is dy plus ddy times dx, right? I'm going to update my slope, and then I'm going to update my value of y. y equals y plus dy times dx. Now I can plot it, f2.plot, x, y, and then I'm going to increase my value of x. x equals what you can't even see. Now you can see it. I can't see it either. Okay. x equals x plus dx, and so this should go all the way to the end. Let's run it and see what happens. Run. I don't know why. Does this need to move down? OK. So the, here's my actual function that I know. And there's my final solution. And this is the one I plotted. Right, so I had a slope of 0, and it ended up there. That's not good enough. Not nearly good enough. Well, let's just change that. I'm going to put the slope at 5. I'm just picking, right? It's a little bit better. You'll see it's a little bit better. It's not all there. Well, let's do it again. Let's do uh, 10. OK, getting better. Let's do 30. Now, one of the things is you don't actually know necessarily know which way you need to increase your slope. So you kind of have to see it. Um, it could be that I decrease the slope to get the value. That's possible, right? But here you can see my red curve is now greater than that curve, so I want to have a lower slope. Let's just pick, uh, yeah, I know the answer, 20. 
And there, now the, the two functions match exactly or close to exactly. So I solved the problem, right? So I just manually changed that initial slope until the thing worked. And that's that. Okay, let's animate the whole process. So what I'm gonna do, you, you have to be careful. Um, I'm gonna show you a trick, right? I, 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 this is a dangerous thing. Because if you wanna say, I'm gonna keep on changing the slope until some end condition matches, it's very possible that end condition would never match. And so I don't want, I don't want my students to do that because I don't want them to get in an endless loop. So we're just gonna run it. We're gonna start with the slope of zero and then we're gonna run it till a slope of 30 and we can just see what that function looks like and we'll animate it. Okay, so I'm gonna go over this whole process of changing this. So I'm gonna put that at zero uh, and I'm gonna make a loop. I'm gonna call, uh, let's, we need, how much am I gonna change the slope by? Let's call that dyd of 0 0.1. And now I'm gonna run this while, uh, oh, let me put this down here. I need to, I gotta change all my stuff around, but I'm gonna move this while dy start is less than 30. And I'm gonna animate it, so I'm gonna put a rate of 100. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the slope of zero. I'm going to plot the solution and then I'm going to change the slope and plot the solution, change the slope, plot the solution. So we can see how the function changes over time. It's just kind of cool. So in this loop, I want to do all this again and again and again. So I'm going to tab and dent that now as part of the loop. Now, every time I come back to the beginning, I need to reset all my values. So I need to reset my Y value. I need to reset my X value. So I'm going to, what the heck is wrong? I think I had get chalk on my mouse and it just gets mad. So right here, uh, y equals negative uh, two, right? Cause y is zero and then x equals zero and then dy is d start, right? Every time I get back to the beginning, I'm gonna be changing my slope. So when I get back and change the slope from the beginning, I have to change that again. I can't just say, change the slope, right? Because it's going to be some new value at the end of my loop right down here. And I don't want to plot. What I want to do to make an animated graph, I need to add my data to a list as I go through my x values and then plot it all at once. So to do that, I'm going to make this thing called F2 data and it's an empty list. I'm going to empty the list at the beginning of the loop and then I'm going to refill it and then I'm going to draw it and then I'll empty it again. And that's how you make an animated graph. So here I can say F2 data is F2 data plus the data point X, Y. So I'm going to add the data point to there. Then when I get done with that, I'm going to plot it. So F2 dot data equals F2 data. You can call F2 data whatever you want. I always use F2 data. But if my function is called F2, right, it's a G curve, then I have to say F2 dot data. That's how I plot it. Now what I'm going to do is increase my value of dy start. So dy start equals dy start plus dy d. That was a change in slope. And I think that should work. I feel like I'm missing something, but let's just, let's just go for it. Let's just try running it and see what happens. I'm going to get this up all the way. That doesn't work. There we go. And there you can see it, it, it got it, right? I got that. And you could... Technically, you could say, okay, and when the difference of these two is less than some value, then stop. Uh, but it's possible that depending on a lot of things, depending on your X values and your DXs and all that stuff, you could jump over that and then it would just go on forever. And then that's just silly. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a graph of the difference in Y values as a function of the start value, the start slope. So let's make a second graph. So you can make a second graph. Um, if I just put it right here after those things, I'm going to call it G2, G curve, no, graph. X title is going to be a DY start, right? I'm going to change my starting slope and the Y value, uh, Y title is going to be equal to title. Let's just call this Y diff. It's the difference in Y values. And let's give it a width of 400, a height of 200. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna go down here. Um, oh, I need a curve. So let's call this F3 equals G curve, color equals color dot. I can put it back to blue, it's a different, it's a different graph. Down here, what I'm going to do is plot the difference in the final Y value versus my start value. So I already have the DY start. Uh, let's just calculate Y diff. It's gonna be equal to uh, Y 
minus, which is my final value. Let's up here, I'm gonna call y final equals to 10, right? That was my other boundary condition was y at pi over four is equal to 10. So y final is my final that I want it to be. So I'm gonna say y minus y final. And then I'm gonna plot that. F three dot plot dy start y diff. And let's run it. And so then it's gonna pass over there. And you'll notice what I want is y, y diff to be zero. So right here, I can see that y diff right there is uh, 19 point, or it's 20, right? It's 20. So that's my starting slope, and now I have my solution. I could go back and plot it with just that slope. Um, now, if you do this, just a reminder with this numerical solution to a differential equation, we don't get a function, right? I know the function right here because I already had it. But normally you just get the data for the function. You just get the data points. So you don't really have everything. Um, so this is the shooting method. I like it because it intuitively makes sense a lot of the times, right? You can say, well, I'm just changing that slope until I get the whole thing to work. Um, but it's not perfect for every situation. It's possible that you can have more than one solution, right? I could shoot it and hit it and then shoot it and hit it again later. That's what happens in the 1D infinite square well in quantum mechanics, uh, but that's that. So I'm gonna solve this exact same problem a different way but I just wanted to start off with you this. I'm going to give you the code to this down below, and that's that. I'll talk to you later. Later.